By now, I'm sure you've all heard of Jensen Huang. He's the mastermind behind NVIDIA, the third largest company in the world with a market cap of $2.2 trillion. What's even more impressive than the size of NVIDIA is how quickly they got there. Within the past year itself, NVIDIA stock has risen 280%, and within the past 5 years, NVIDIA stock has risen over 2,200%. In other words, NVIDIA has gained $1.62 trillion in market cap within the past year and a $2.1 trillion in market cap within the past 5 years. Seeing this, any rational person would be quick to call NVIDIA a massive bubble. And honestly, there's no arguing that NVIDIA does not have a rich valuation. But they do have equally impressive fundamental growth as well. Their revenue has rocketed from $5 billion a quarter to $18 billion per quarter, and their net income has moved from $2 billion a quarter to $9 billion a quarter. And projections for NVIDIA are simply even more bullish. On top of this, it seems that NVIDIA employees love Jensen Huang. In fact, he has a 98% approval rating. For perspective, Sundar is at 81%, Andy Jazzy is at 69%, and Zuck is only at 54%. As such, I think it's very fitting that Jensen Huang was just named the world's best CEO of 2023 by multiple publications. But it wasn't always sunshines and rainbows for NVIDIA. For the first 15 to 20 years, NVIDIA was constantly on edge, trying not to go bankrupt in the cutthroat chip industry. And they risked it all multiple times, pivoting from the gaming industry, to the mining industry, to the data center industry, to now the AI industry. Jensen has been at the helm through all of it, and he's been rewarded handsomely for that with a personal fortune of $78 billion. So here's the insane story of Jensen Huang, and how Jensen became the number one CEO in the world. Taking a look back, Jensen Huang was born on February 17th, 1963, in Tainan, Taiwan. His father was a chemical engineer, and his mother was a school teacher, though Jensen didn't spend much of his childhood with his parents. You see, Jensen's parents wanted Jensen and his brother to get an American education and grow up in the land of opportunity. They were doing everything they could to move the entire family to America, but that was taking a lot longer than expected. So when Jensen was 9 years old, his parents sent him and his brother to live with one of their uncles who lived in Tacoma, Washington. His uncle had just moved to the United States himself, so he wasn't all that familiar with the American education system. He wanted to put the boys in a prep school, but he accidentally ended up putting them in a reform school. If you don't know what a reform school is, it's where kids who are convicted of crimes are sent to instead of prison. Huang recalls that the kids were really tough and that they all had pocket knives. In retrospect though, this honest oversight might have been a good thing actually, as Jensen was somewhat of a troublemaker in his youth. In fact, when he was just 8 years old, he lit a swimming pool on fire so that he could see how the flames looked from underwater. Honestly, a pretty cool science experiment, but maybe not the best idea at 8. Anyway, as an immigrant, focus and hard work at school was basically in his blood. He would skip two grades and graduate high school at 16, before attending Oregon State University, where he received a bachelor's in electrical engineering. After college, Jensen would work as a director at LSI Logic and as a chip designer at AMD. Fun fact, the current CEO of AMD, Lisa Su, who is also a beast, just happens to be one of Jensen's cousins. Huang's mother is Su's grandfather's sister. The two didn't really know each other growing up, but somehow they both ended up at the top of the chip industry. Anyway, after spending a couple of years in the field, Jensen would go back to college. This time, he would go to Stanford, where he got a master's in electrical engineering in 1993. This coincided with his 30th birthday, which seems to have led to some sort of midlife crisis for Jensen. He no longer wanted to work a traditional job, he wanted to do something a lot bigger. So, he rounded up two of his fellow engineers, Chris Malachowski and Curtis Prime, and they would found NVIDIA at a Denny's on Jensen's 30th birthday. NVIDIA wasn't actually originally called NVIDIA, it was actually called NV, which stood for Next Version. It wasn't until the trio had to file paperwork for the business that they started thinking of a name. They would end up landing on the word NVIDIA, which is the Latin word for envy, and they would just drop the leading eye. 
While they didn't know exactly what to name the company, they knew exactly what the company was gonna do. They were gonna address the video game market. From their perspective, the video game industry was one of the only industries that met their two criteria. One, it was an extremely computationally intense industry, meaning that they could really push the boundaries with chip performance. And two, it appealed to an extremely broad market. In other words, the video game industry allowed the trio to push the boundaries without having to work on something super theoretical. Instead, they could work on something that appealed to hundreds of millions of people, which brings us into Jensen's first rule of success. Innovation is not about inventing something new, it's about improving what already exists. In that vein, the trio would put together $40,000 and start working on their first product, a graphics accelerator called the NV1. Little did they know, that was nowhere near enough money for what they were trying to do. Fortunately, their strong engineering backgrounds made it relatively easy to raise quite a bit of VC, $20 million to be precise. But when you need to hire dozens of engineers and spend years on R&D, that money runs out quick, especially when Microsoft decides to screw you over. You see, when it comes to rendering graphics, there are two schools of thought. You can either use triangles like this, or you can use quadratics like this. Nvidia felt that quadratic primitives was the future, and they would spend years developing their first graphics accelerator, the NV1, to be a quadratic processor. But in 1995, Microsoft would announce that DirectX, the new standard for Windows games, would only support triangle primitives. In other words, everything that Nvidia had worked on for years was now completely obsolete. They had to switch to triangle primitives, but they didn't have the money to do it. So Jensen would be forced to lay off half his staff of about 100, and everybody else would have to work 24-7 to even have a chance at saving the company. After a grueling two years, Nvidia would come out with another graphics accelerator, the Riva 128, in August of 1997. At the time, the company only had enough money for one more month of payroll, leading to the company motto, our company is always 30 days away from going out of business. Fortunately for Nvidia, the Riva 128 would go on to sell 1 million units within just 4 months, saving the company from collapse, but the real journey had just begun. Jensen would use the momentum from the Riva 128 to take the company public and lock in some more funding in January of 1999. If you were one of the few people who bought Nvidia at IPO and held all these years, you would have enjoyed a cool 1100x. But anyway, Jensen would use Riva 128 revenue along with IPO money to build the company's first full-fledged GPU, the GeForce 256, which came out in late 1999. This GPU would not only go on to be a massive success, but it would even win Nvidia a contract from the same company that screwed them over just a few years ago, Microsoft. Microsoft would give Nvidia $200 million to be the official GPU partner for the Xbox. This naturally gave Nvidia worldwide exposure, and even got the company added to the S&P 500. Nvidia finally had some stability, but it had cost Jensen everything. Literally. In order to actually keep Nvidia afloat all these years, Jensen had to dilute himself into oblivion. In fact, he currently only owns 3.5% of Nvidia, largely due to severe dilution over the first 10 years. Ironically, Nvidia has grown so much that even 3.5% is worth $78 billion. But back in the day, Jensen was only a decamillionaire despite founding a company that was in the S&P 500. Anyway, Nvidia would go on to power the PS3 as well, but breaking into the PC industry proved to be a lot more difficult. In 2008, Apple, Dell, and HP would launch a class action lawsuit against Nvidia for shipping GPUs with abnormally high failure rates. Nvidia would end up agreeing to reimburse or repair affected computers and take a $150 to $200 million loss. This wasn't going to bankrupt the company or anything, but it did force them to do layoffs and cause the stock to crash. You can't even see it on this graph, but zooming in, Nvidia crashed a painful 86% due to this saga along with the financial crisis. And that brings us into Jensen's second rule of success, which is humble optimism. I learned that it was okay for CEOs to say that the strategy didn't work, that the technology didn't work, that the product didn't work. But we're still going to be great, and let me tell you why.
Despite Nvidia's early struggles, by the 2010s they were finally an established chip maker. They dominated the GPU industry and they were basically synonymous with gaming graphics. They could have easily just stuck to this and been a highly successful $100 billion company. But Jensen was never a fan of voluntary stagnation, which brings us into Jensen's third rule of success. Embrace the unknown and embrace change. That's where true breakthroughs happen. This is exactly what Jensen would do. Nvidia had successfully created industry-leading computational power, and now it was time to see where else that power could be applied. The first industry that came to mind was cryptocurrency mining. If you didn't know it, GPUs are, or at least were, crucial for proof-of-work cryptocurrencies. The industry has since largely moved on to ASICs, but back in the 2013 and 2017 bull runs, Nvidia and AMD GPUs were ballers when it came to crypto mining. Jensen would very much lean into this trend by jacking up prices and creating mining-specific GPUs. This naturally led to a shortage of GPUs for the core gaming community and turned much of the community against Nvidia. This was a rather tumultuous time for Nvidia. Fun fact, discussing these GPU dynamics was how this channel got started back in 2017. But anyway, investors started questioning the sustainability of Nvidia's strategy. Was Nvidia risking their long-term future with gamers just to serve the mining fad? Surely that wasn't a great long-term strategy, right? Well, it wasn't. This would lead to a lot of gamers moving over to AMD GPUs and the gamers who stayed weren't all that happy. Also, after the mining boom ended, demand plummeted and Nvidia stock would crash 57%. Clearly, this was not the breakthrough that Jensen was hoping for, but he didn't stop looking. It turns out that Nvidia GPUs were quite useful for developing AI self-driving technology. This partnership lasted for a few years, but it wasn't the breakthrough that Jensen was hoping for either, because Tesla would eventually ditch Nvidia in favor of their own chip in early 2019. But this gave Jensen an idea. Sure, Tesla was able to create their own AI chips, but how many other companies could do the same thing? Probably not that many. How many would want that technology though? Probably a lot. And this line of reasoning is what resulted in Nvidia's unprecedented run over the past few years. They became the go-to AI chip producer. Today, Microsoft, Google, Meta, Amazon, and a bunch of other Fortune 500 companies are spending tens of billions buying these chips, and that is why Nvidia has gone to the moon. Also, remember how we were talking about Nvidia risking their $100 billion future with gamers by trying all these new strategies? Well, today, that $100 billion market does not even account for 5% of Nvidia's market cap. In fact, they can completely ditch the gaming market and still easily be a trillion dollar company. But you'll never see Jensen brag about that because as far as he's concerned, Nvidia is always only one wrong step away from losing it all. Uh, you constantly say, even at this point in the ballgame, uh, you say, I do everything I can not to go out of business. I do everything I can not to fail that that is like a mantra inside the company, even at this point. What is that about? I think when you, when you build a company from the ground up and you've, you experience real, real adversity and, uh, uh, and you really, really experience nearly going out of business several times, uh, that, that feeling stays with you. Um, I wake up every morning in, in, in you know, some condition of concern and, and uh, uh, I, I, don't, I don't wake up proud and confident. I wake up worried and concerned. And that mindset right there, that is how Jensen became the number one CEO in the world. If you couldn't tell, Jensen has always been my favorite tech leader. Who's yours? Comment that down below. Also, this recent NVIDIA run-up has made the average NVIDIA employee into a DECA millionaire. Check out this video to see how NVIDIA is working through that one. But until then, I'm Hari, and I'll see you guys on the next one.